All right, good evening, everybody. We are meeting with Karen and Robert Duncan, who are awesome collectors in Lincoln, Nebraska, who collect out, you know, in Lincoln and beyond Lincoln, and have a wonderful passion and enthusiasm. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, all right, I don't know how much you saw of the previous discussion. I like to go back to the beginning. How did you guys get interested in art and collecting in the first place? Wait, let's take Karen and go way back to high school and or before. Were you interested in art? Did you think you were going to be an artist? How did you find, where did, how did you find Robert? How did you discover the shared interest, etc.? All right. Well, I was never interested in art in high school. I was never an artist in high school, but I was a musician. And I played numerous instruments, and I was involved in all the school activities that um, music was, in, was included in. And I found Robert in Clarinda, Iowa. We grew up together from junior high on. And um, when we married, we moved to Lincoln, Nebraska. And from there, I became involved with the Sheldon, uh, the Sheldon Art Gallery here in Lincoln which is a small gem of, at that time, 20th century American art. It was fabulous. I mean, they've got a Brancusi, and they had George <laughs> Newbert. Um, Everybody wants their Brancusi, right? Of course they do. Were you there before George? No, I was there with George. George, we should do a webinar. George is not all that computer literate and doesn't really want to be, but George <laughs> Newbert is a wonderful human being. How about you, Robert? When did you get interested in art? Well, I agree with Karen. Uh, she started taking me to concerts and, and getting involved in the performing arts. Uh, and then we joined an, uh, an organization called the Young Presidents Organization, and we started traveling with a like-minded uh, group of people. And uh, one of the first things that we did, well, Karen had volunteered at Sheldon and became involved in that way. But as we started traveling, uh, one of the things we started doing was going to museums and going to art galleries. I remember very well we bought our first uh, um, Spanish Impressionist piece in Madrid in probably 1977 or 1978, and that really got us started. That was the beginning. I would also say that we had some friends that we traveled with that were beginning collectors as well, and I think that may have influenced us. You guys correct pr collect pretty aggressively, yes? We do, yes. I and so. fairly encyclopedically. Totally. Totally. Um, but you were also supportive of your own home community. Very much. Very much. Um, let's talk about home community, because I, I, I certainly believe that everybody is, should support their own community and, you know, the people that make a difference in their own lives and being able to contribute to, I don't know, to, to, to pollinate their own environment so that it comes back to, to you know, serve you as well. What, what, what kinds of, what's your attitude about supporting your community? You know, I don't think we intentionally um, say we're going to go buy this piece to support the community or support a local artist. We look at a lot of local art and we buy the pieces that, uh, that uh, strike a, uh, a tone with us. Uh, and, and, and we see a lot of local art. We go to a lot of uh, auctions and events and openings and we, we know a lot of these artists. We go to their studios. And so... Uh, it, it's just a part of our collecting and an important part. Uh, we, we love it. We've got some great pieces. You, know, and, and you, ne you never know. Maybe some, one of them will be a star someday, but it really doesn't matter. We love it. You know what we just bought because he was a Nebraskan? And that's Dan Christensen. A huge, huge Dan Christensen, which we thought, well, let's buy Dan Christensen because he's from Cozad. we got to have him. We bought the piece, hung it on the wall, and we have fallen in love with it. Day after day, we love it more. Yes. Um, How, are there, let's talk about constraints. <laughs> Do you have to agree? We try to, because there is so much art out there that if one of us doesn't like a piece, well, we will find something that both of us like. So usually, 99% of the time, I would say so. we agree. Yes. Who, do you look at art together, mostly? Yes. Almost yes. all the time. Yes. Um, do you have to hang it or install it or does it have to? You know, I mean, do you buy art and it doesn't get exhibited, doesn't get shown at home? That's true. Um, 
and we we never buy we never think about a place well this piece would look good on this wall or with this piece of furniture or whatever that's never ever a consideration in fact we bought art that we don't have room for and we've had a hard time displaying anywhere uh, but we sh we show our art uh, in our business uh, in, a, in several different locations our children uh, uh, I've both uh, done new homes recently. We, we told them to come over and take whatever they wanted. And of course they took some of the best pieces and that's great. <laughs> uh, and then we started a, uh, an exhibition, a private exhibition space here in Lincoln with our dear friends, uh, Catherine and Mark LeBaron. And, uh, and we display, uh, we change that every six months. And finally, uh, and this is a story in and of itself. Uh, we bought the former Carnegie Library in our hometown of Clarinda, Iowa. And we're just in the process of rehabbing that. And it'll be a museum for Clarinda and Southwest Iowa. That's really beautiful. Um, do you have an art budget? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, till we run out of money. <laughs> we don't always stay within the budget. That's a problem. It is a problem. It's a serious problem. It's You're serious. laughing. And it's a serious problem. We have to meet with the people that take care of our accounting uh, quarterly just to be sure we're staying within our... Or staying close. Staying close, yeah. Do you buy art most months? I'd say so. Typically, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> do you deaccession? Do you get rid of art? Not Get rid of the wrong word. Do you no. part with art? No. Uh, all, in the, in the few, a few exceptions. We've given uh, some of our art to the Bemis in Omaha, and we, we love the Bemis, and, uh, and we wanted to contribute that. And we will, in time, contribute more and more of our art to uh, other museums and institutions. But we but never we sell, don't it. sell it. We never sell anything. Do you have – what are the different – venues means that you acquire art I mean are you I'm looking at Theo's question I have to give credit I mean are you buying mostly from galleries directly from artists at auction online what are the what are the variables all the above except online we haven't really and I, and I am computer literate I just don't take the time to go through the online uh, stuff so we typically have not bought online but uh, yes we travel a great deal we go to galleries we go to museums uh, see artists that we become interested in, follow those artists. We buy at auction. Uh, we buy sometimes directly from artists. Fundraisers. That we know. Um, I should mention that we've got a uh, artist studio in Puerto Vallarta again with our friends, the LeBarons, and we'll invite artists down for four weeks at a time in the winter down there. That's by invitation only. And we'll frequently buy pieces that they create down there. So <clears throat> it's really all over the place. Are you buying solely living artists? No, uh, we're not restrained no. to that. We just I, bought the Dan Christensen, and he died here, what, about three years ago? No, I didn't know that. I think you're right. More than that. Uh, primarily living artists, because that tends to fall in within our budget better. But um, uh, we don't think about that. I mean, we don't think about whether the artist is living or not. However, I would add that it is important to us to meet and know the artists that we collect, and we really make an effort to try to do that. And, and to a large extent, we, we, we know a lot of them. Uh, we'd rather have dinner with a bunch of artists than anybody we could think of. I know that's true. Do you, do you, do you see, let's talk about to the extent to which you see a relationship between the artist's personality and his or her artwork. Hmm. Well, it's easy. I'll answer that. I think it's easier to like art if you like the artist. Agreed. You know, like that person's art if you like the artist. But, you know, we like almost all the artists we meet. Very, very seldom do we meet an artist that we think is unpleasant. I can think of one instance where we met an artist and, and he rubbed us wrong. Uh, it was at a dinner. And, uh, and then we met him five years later in a casual situation and, and we become friends. So there you go. Do you think there's a relationship between their, I mean, somebody once said to me, all artists look like their work or their spouse does. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, do you see an affinity between the personality, bright, cheerful personality, bright, cheerful artwork, or these things don't necessarily go hand in hand? 
I, I think you got it wrong. People look like they're dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, you want to answer that? Yeah, I, I don't think I see a relationship there. No. I've never thought of that at any rate. We went to visit Kiefer in France, and he is the most delightful, positive guy. And some of his art is, art is so dark, you know. And oh, yeah. Kind of scary. But he's not. He's delightful. Let's talk about your trip a year ago to South America. Okay. I mean, what, what I find what's particularly exciting about that is so much art that you discovered or that I discovered through your blog and your writing. And your, um, that was, what, how much research did you do? Well, first of all, explain the whole trip and then we'll get into some details. Uh, this has been a dream of mine. I'm in the aviation business. We are in the aviation business and we, we have our own airplane. We're fortunate enough and I fly and so does Mark LeBaron. And uh, it had been a dream for years to take the airplane and, and take a tour around South America. And uh, when we, the four of us got sat down to talk about it, Karen says, well, we, I think we should focus on art on this trip. And everybody agreed immediately. Uh, research wise, we talked to a lot of friends. We talked to some gallery owners that dealt in South American art. We got names, we got ideas um, all kind, from all kinds of sources. Again, Young President's organization, uh, there's, they have an art network and I contacted them for suggestions and ideas. So we had a, we had a good start when we left. Uh, all that said, we discovered a whole bunch more as we, as we did things. You'd arrive at a city, and I can think of arriving in Santiago on a Saturday mid-afternoon, and things are starting to close. We called a gallery, and they said, yes, we'll stay open for you. And we went there and toured it, and then they gave us six or ten other names to, to visit in the next uh, two or three days that we were there. So we were gone a total of 23 days. We visited, I think, 12 countries in total. Um, we hit the biggest cities, the cities where the – where the best uh, quantity of artists would be, and uh, and and we we knew almost none of these artists when we started, and now many of them are friends. Some of them are, are have been or are coming to Puerto Vallarta. Uh, obviously, we bought a lot of work, both the Liberas and ourselves, and we have an exhibition of that work right now at our private uh, gallery space, Assemblage. That's cool. Um, do you? Th <sighs> I don't know where to go. What do, what do you do with language? Um, both Karen and, and uh, Catherine speak some Spanish, actually pretty good Spanish. But uh, most of the people we encountered spoke English. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't a huge problem. It wasn't a problem at all, I didn't think. No. Well, um, how do you know, or does it matter? No, it does. How, pricing. How do you know that, you know, I mean, we, we've got some hot tourists in from the United States. I just added a digit to my prices. Um, <laughs> how, do, how, how do you negotiate? How do you know the prices are right? Does it, to what extent does it matter? To what extent does the relationship, I don't know, how do you determine value? Well, how do you determine value in any art? It's really hard. We of don't, course. <laughs> we don't generally do a lot of research on that. We respond to what we like, and uh, I, I guess we're trusting. Um, and, and I can't think of any time when we got burned on a piece of art. And I think the same thing was true down there. Uh, we really had no way of knowing the value of what these artists were selling. It's, it's, I, now, we've looked at a lot of art for 40 years and bought a lot of art. Um, you have a feel for it. I guess we have a feel for it, but uh, that's really not something that uh, is an issue. Did you have a sense about how much art you would acquire before you departed and how much did you get in relationship to what you thought you were going to do? I would guess that we got five times more than I expected oh, really? us to buy. I, I just didn't. And, and, Karen, and Karen's more realistic? <laughs> well, uh, Catherine LeBaron and I are the real aggressive ones when it comes to buying art. And we found ourselves in the past uh, visiting a studio and rushing for the same piece at the same time. What so happens we, then? We yeah. developed a system. She was born on the odd day of the month, and I was born on the even day of the month. So whatever, whether it's an, if it's an even day, I get first choice. We get first choice. Yeah, right. Interesting. How did the art get back home? Uh, we shipped it all, and uh, with with some with some bad experiences and and some uh, 
and, and some okay experiences. That wasn't the best. Uh, some of these countries are really difficult to get the art shipped from. In a few cases, the artists brought the work with them to the United States uh, when they traveled here. In one case, uh, we bought a number of photographs and uh, they all arrived damaged. And I think they were probably damaged by, I think this was Argentina, by the customs people exiting Argentina, pulled them out of the roll and damaged them. And so what the artists then did, they were photographs. So fortunately, uh, the artists set up a hard drive and we had them reprinted here in the United States. Really interesting. Do you plan on doing other trips like this? <laughs> well, we're kicking it around. The next, if, if we do it, the next one would be around the world in the Northern Hemisphere. That'd be beautiful. Yeah. Um, I, you, how significant were the flying logistics and time spent in customs and border negotiations? Because I read that with great interest. Well, we hired a company to help us with all the aviation part. They did all the planning and arranged for all the handling on the ground and, and actually the ground transportation. And that worked beautifully. It was easy. Uh, it does take time. You have to be patient. And you, you go into airline airports, and so then you've got to leave your airplane and go into the terminal in many cases and clear through customs. But there were only four of us. Mark and I were pilots, and the, mm -hmm. and the, the company that did all the planning gave crew badges to Catherine and, and Karen. So we would walk right through the crew line and we didn't have to wait in the long lines. But the whole thing to, for a three hour trip would take uh, two thirds of a day. Time, you, you know, it's a long trip to the airport in these big cities. You gotta do all the exiting of the country and then you gotta fly, enter the country and another long trip to the hotel. So you'd have to almost plan a day for the truck for the travel and then we'd stay two or three days in these key cities where we could just focus on looking at art. How have your tastes evolved over time? I think our eye and our tastes have gotten better, which is normal, I think. I think that's what you expect when you look start looking at art. And you uh, still love each other too, you know. I mean <laughs> Most of the time. I mean, you got that part right in the first place. That's a good prerequisite. Yeah. Um, well, you know, when we started, we bought that French Impressionist piece. We would not look at anything like that today. We've tended to move more and more toward the contemporary. We've gotten into video. We've gotten into photographs that we didn't do in the beginning. Uh, we've definitely evolved. We have some ceramic. Uh, June Kaneko is a dear friend of ours, and we travel with uh, June and Ree quite a bit. So we've met a lot of friends of theirs that are ceramic artists. So we've, we've broadened the medium. We started really with sculpture primarily. Out, uh, outside. Outside sculpture, because right. we've always had space outside. But we keep broadening the mediums and the things that we're interested in and the things we collect. That's how it's changed, really. That's sweet. Um, works on paper, you, you, you absorb? Oh, yes. We do some of those. And you know what we're buying on paper now are artists that we can't afford a painting or we can't afford a sculpture. It's gotten beyond our ability, but we appreciate and, and really like the artists and want to have, have a, a work in our collection. Do you, how in breadth do you, do, do you collect? I mean, would you, how many works of art by a given artist is enough? Too many? You know, I mean, to an extent you're saying, I don't want to buy a Jasper Johns painting because I would rather buy X number of other things by other artists. You know, That's so, how we are saying. Yeah. So, I mean, like, but some are, some of the people you've purchased in South America and elsewhere, you have multiples, multiple examples of their art. Um, what's the, ad, how do you, you know, where do you draw the line? How do you, how do you determine this? What do you feel? We don't usually buy multiples of, I mean, it's very rare. And it has to be an artist we, we're really taken with, who's a living artist that we're really taken with. And sometimes we'll buy three, four pieces. Yeah, we can't help ourselves in some in some cases. And and by the way, we usually get to know an artist over a period of time and look at their work and think about it before we purchase a piece. On the other hand, once in a while, and especially on this trip to South America, but I can think an instance when we were in England several years ago, went to a big sculpture garden, fell in love with this artist. Um, I, I knew the director of the, uh, of the garden and he directed us to her, her studio, which was a half a day's drive away. We met her, fell in love with her and her work, and we bought four pieces. Yeah. So That's unusual. That is unusual. 
Uh, same thing in South America. We fell in love with one photographer, sculptor, video artist, and, and we bought multiple pieces of hers. Mm -hmm. But that, that isn't usual. You know what's interesting in our collection is that we have a great deal of women, women artists. That's good. And it was never intended to be that. It's just, it just happened. There are a lot of good women artists out there, and some way or other they appeal to us. That's true. That's good. That's good. Can you, what, what is it that appeals? Can you, we don't know. Yeah, Do we know? It's not deliberate at all. No. You know, we just look around us and here's all these women artists. Uh, well, aside Dick. from the fact that they're better, is there, is there, <laughs> is, there that. <laughs> is there a greater sensitivity? I don't know. I think perhaps. I think that it perhaps is a greater sense. Of Karen's care. being humble. All right, let's um, let's 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 open this up for some questions. And I see some people out. Oh, so Angie was a, a Bemis resident, and I used to be on the board of the Bemis a hundred. Well, no, a long time ago. Angie, um, I don't want to read your whole question. Just go. Ahead. I hope there's one in there. Go ahead and ask it. Good. I just wanted to say thank you. I saw your collection in person, and it was amazing. Oh, okay. um, thank you so much for sharing tonight, too. Um, I guess I was wondering, how do you recommend an artist find those collectors that are a match for their work? Well, I think it's just like us finding a piece that's a match for our taste. You've just got to do a lot of it. you got to get your work out there every opportunity you can, in every venue that you can, and give people a chance to respond to it. Um, I, I don't think there's any targeted way of doing that that's better than another. Obviously, it's wonderful if you can get hooked up with a gallery. Uh, we go to a lot of art fairs, so we see a lot of work at art fairs. Um, but honestly, uh, at, at a, on a real local basis, our museum out in Kearney, uh, Museum of Nebraska Art, has an auction every two years. We always go to that. And, and although they have some artists that repeat, uh, they get new artists in, and we always buy something there. And, and uh, even if we go with and say we don't have any budget left and we're not going to buy anything, we always do. Uh, we go to the uh, to a lot of local shows. Uh, we go to the Bemis on a regular basis. So just any way that you can get your art out there and in front of people. Exactly. Great. Thank you. Sometimes it just takes time. Yeah. Just keep going. Keep yeah, at it. Keep at it. I mean, you guys are particularly not prejudiced, and you're willing to look at art just about anywhere, and if it strikes a fancy, it may end up at home. That's it's, true. It's the thing we love to do more than anything else, is look at art. I retired about seven years ago, and we spend more, most of our time looking at art. Somebody was asking a question about communicating with other collectors. Who, who, what, can you unmute yourself, whomever that was, and ask your question? Good question. I saw that question. Who was it? <laughs> uh, it's it was me. <laughs> oh, awesome! I, oh, Olga's Olga's. It's in the middle of the night. Go to, where are you? Um, in Norway, Oslo, or, or um, nearby. We have been to Oslo. Yes, I've been to the museum there. And actually, oh, nice. We, we have our uh, Oslo family here with us right now. A young woman uh, married a dear friend of ours, and they're in town right now. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, may I ask you, by, by the way, uh, what galleries um, have you visited in Oslo? Do you remember? No, no I was at the museum. Um, I, didn't, I don't think we did any galleries, did we? No. We were there for a wedding. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't recall going to galleries. We went to the museum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my question was about uh, connection with other collectors. Um, around the globe or in US, do, do you communicate with other collectors or is there any network um, not, among not, collectors? Not a real active network and not something that I do on a regular basis, but this Young Presidents organization does have the art network and they'll mm -hmm. post on there if, they're, um, if, if there's some event. Uh, when there's art fairs and so forth, they, they bring people together that are belong to that group that are at that art fair for a gathering. Um, but I wouldn't say, and, and I, and, and we do a lot of trips where, where they'll arrange uh, tours of private collections and we, and we go see those people. Do we stay in touch with them on a regular basis? No, I don't think so. No, but we've had some good friends in the Midwest who are really very, very fine collectors 
and they become friends. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in now, Omaha we, we, and Iowa. We gravitate to a circle of friends that like art. And uh, so, so you just get a lot of opportunities to, to see different things and, and see new artists and so forth through that venue as well. We love to take, we love to tour private collections. Our very favorite thing to do is go to our studios probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We went to the uh, museum, remember? Yeah. 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 What about, all right, so today a lot of people are buying art as an investment or as a hedge or to, you know, impress their neighbors or all kinds of hyperbolic activity. You, uh, you you certainly love that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't love that. And we don't do any of that. Um, um, never buy art for an investment. No, never. Because most of the art you buy or most of the art we buy doesn't grow in value. That's true. I mean, not usually. Some of it has. And some of it's done very well. But that isn't why we bought it. We decided years ago... Uh, Friends of ours uh, invest in stocks and bonds and, and uh, various kinds of investments. Uh, we literally put all of our money into art. All the money that uh, we earn on other things or, or that uh, we get dividends from, uh, we, we turn around and invest it in art. Uh, but we don't do it with any thought of a return. How can you get a return if you never sell anything? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point what yeah. about what about you know the, the, the long-term picture what, what where do you I mean have you planned for your art 57 100 years out uh, it's been on again off again we're not sure what we're going to do uh, so I don't know the plan as it exists today is that the core of our collection will, <clears throat> will remain in a foundation that we've set up and it'll be a uh, accessibly accessible to the public in some way uh, we're going to give a lot of the work away to local uh, museums and uh, places like the Bemis and the Coneco in Omaha not for profits um, the Sheldon the yeah. um, Nebraska Museum of Nebraska Art and yeah, all those yeah Omaha, Jocelyn, and Jocelyn. Omaha. so there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity to uh, to have our art um, shown um, I, you know, there's been a lot of literature in, in the last 10 or 15 years about collectors uh, giving uh, their art to museums and it goes in the basement. Well, that's, that, that's true. Um, so, so the core of our collection, the most, Im the most important pieces we're going to keep here with the house and grounds and fund it with a foundation. We're still talking about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah she's right. It, it changes. It could change. I understand. That's beautiful. Um, Sam, you have a number of comments and questions. Um, pick like one or two when I, there you are. Go ahead, Sam. Uh, I'm just, I don't really have a question. I'm just so impressed by you both. And, and um, I don't know that I'm talking to you. I, you sound much like, um, Paul, is it the Vogel, the Vogel collector yes, yes. couple? Yeah. We've seen yeah. that. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just lovely to hear you both. I'm just sort of chuffed by it all. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. So we just buy what we love. And yeah. We love artists and we love art. Yeah. Yeah. And because you, you know, it seems that you're, um, not that you're random, but that it is such a subjective experience for you when you're collecting that it just proves that the artist really has to just do their own thing. You know, you can't really buy into any, you can't give yourself over to any kind of collector's whim or fancy. Yep. You know, you really have to stick to your own guns and then Absolutely. maybe you find your collector along the way, you know? That's right. That's exactly right. We, uh, yeah. I forgot this. Well, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> We're getting old too. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> we all, oh, I know what I was going to say. We've yeah. been told by many people that go through our collection that it's a, it's a very personal collection. And yeah. Reflects us personally, and yeah. That, that's a nice compliment. That's it is personal, and, and yeah, we it personally. And we've had for we built a new home twelve or thirteen years ago, and it was a great architect, and he built a beautiful home for us. And he kept saying, "Send me pictures of your art so I can place them on the grounds and in the home." Yeah. No, no you're not <laughs> gonna get to do that. No. <laughs> That's, that's, our, our, that's yeah. our job. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Paul mentioned George Newbert, a dear friend, and George has helped us. Uh, place things once uh, in a while, but by and large, we we do almost all of it ourselves. 
We spent yeah. a lot of time in Mexico in the winter, and we were getting ready to leave one winter, and George Newbert said, um, while you're gone, would you mind if, would you care if I move things around? <laughs> I said, no, have at it, George. Move it wherever you want. We came back. He'd moved unbelievable heavy things all over the house. The whole place yeah. was stirred up, and it was just great. It was beautiful. Oh. We loved it. <laughs> He awesome. has grand concert pianos. He is moving everything, and it was terrific. George was wonderful, and George didn't really have a particular art background, and he started off in Oakland, California, in the Parks and Rec Department, and yeah. graduated to director of the Oakland Art Museum before moving to the Sheldon in Lincoln, Nebraska, where he was a brilliant director for a long time and bringing a ton of art to the University of Nebraska campus. You know, yeah. DeSouvero and Heiser and all kinds of wonder, Halter, I mean, and all kinds of wonderful, you know, significant sculpture um, before bopping down to San Antonio for a stint and then returning to what, Brownsville? Is that where he is? Yeah, yeah. let me put a plug in for George. He's in Brownville, Nebraska, and in October, he's going to open his folk art museum. Uh, called Flatwater, mm -hmm. and he's he's done taken an old church and done it redone it beautifully, and so any of you are out there listening and driving through Nebraska, think about Brownville and the Folk Art Museum. George, George was a football player, you know. I mean, he yeah. and and, and a, a, a solid sized man who has a proclivity for bow ties. Um, <laughs> he's a great man. Yeah. yeah, when we worked together, every now and then he'd say, "Karen, I need about seventy five thousand dollars." Do you think, you think you could come up some way to raise that? I'd say, sure, George, we'll figure it out. So, and we always did. <laughs> He's, yeah, and I'm sure he did that with a lot of girls. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just me. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I, you know, I love George. I really, yeah. you know, you I'm blanking on his wife's name. What's his wife's name? Eva. Eva. Eva, yep. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Um, do you feel like, well, somebody, maybe it was Chris. Who, were you asking about, Chris, go, I'll, let me unmute you. You have a few questions, and if you don't answer the one I'm thinking of, I'll, I'll do it. Um, oops, one second. And, oh, my, hold on. Um, there we go. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. Yeah, first, thanks for your time and your great stories. Oh, you're welcome. Um, yeah, I had a couple of questions. Just uh, um, have you bought art online or discovered somebody online? And just an estimate, how many pieces have you collected up until now? Uh, no, I don't think we have bought anything online. As, as I said earlier, uh, I use a computer a lot, but uh, it's a matter of time. It would take a lot of time to shop online. And uh, Karen doesn't particularly enjoy the computer and wouldn't be there with me. So that's not, but you know, we're old. Uh, we're in our 70s. And uh, so the next generation younger than we are is probably doing that all the time. So our answer to that question, don't let that guide you. Because I think online obviously is going to become more and more and more important. Mm -hmm. uh, How many pieces do we have? Around 2,000. Wow. Well, I, I work at the Walker Art Center here in Minneapolis, oh, and that's their whole collection. Is two thousand <laughs> pieces. So you guys are doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we love we love the Walker, and we love uh, what you do up there. Yeah, thanks. Well, thank yeah, thanks for your answers. Okay. Thank you both. The Walker is a great institution, and I don't know. I I feel like they were greater ten years ago, but I you know I, I hope to, I hope to see more, you know aggressive and path leading on their part. I think it's really solid. Sherry, you've had some questions. Let me um, unmute you, Sherry. Hold on. Dun, 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 dun. There you are. Go ahead. But I'm curious about whether you have any uh, spiritual artworks. That's sort of a passion of mine. And whether you see any connection between um, collecting art on a theme um, or possibly exhibiting art or sharing art with the spiritual community like churches that are sort of used to be a, more of a place where people would go to see art and are sort of failing? That's an interesting question. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, 
I don't think we do have any spiritual art uh, that the, I can. The, the Buddha, paper mache uh, Buddha. Yeah, we do. That, have... we, that we bought in uh, Taiwan. Yeah. But no, I, the answer to that is no. I don't think so. No. I think each and every piece is spiritual. <laughs> right. Well, I agree with that. So. <laughs> what was your other question? That was the only question. Thanks. Oh, okay. Thank you. How do you keep track of your art? Uh, we keep close track of the art. Uh, we have a woman that helps us part time, Ann Pagel, um, titles curatorial assistant, and we use a, uh, a web based uh, inventory system that, and we keep detailed records of everything. So we've 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 got that nailed down. And we have another interesting thing that we did. Uh, we give tours here at our home frequently, lots and lots of them. How many? Wait, wait, wait. How many times a year is frequently? Times I, a week. Yeah. No way. Wait. Really? So sometimes of the year, it's several times a week. It depends. So we you have to you have to keep you have to keep the house clean. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's that goes without saying. That's the way care. It's clean regardless of whether we're giving a tour or not. Uh, we, so we ask a local company here that, to develop a iPad product for us that uh, has our has the collection that is being shown on the iPad. Room by room. Room by room. So you can go into a certain room, touch that room. It'll give you thumbnails of all the pieces in that room. Touch that thumbnail and it'll give you the details of the piece. So if you're giving a tour and you've forgotten something about it or someone asks a detailed question, you've got it right there at your hand. And, and we, uh, we move our art all the time. So Anne can add pieces to that and pull pieces out as we move the work around. This thing about not being computer literate isn't flying very well. <laughs> <laughs> do, you want to hear, do you want to hear an interesting story about, you talk about keeping the house clean. Yep. My entire life, my mother taught me, I get out of bed, I make the bed. Immediately. I don't do anything else. I get out of the bed, I make the bed. Well, one morning, I think I got a phone call or something, and I got sidetracked into the other room, and I forgot to make the bed. I mean, in my whole life, I mean, it was maybe the first time I forgot to make the bed. Well, there was a tour that day, and Robert was <laughs> the tour, and he walks into the bedroom, and he's shocked because the bed's not made, and he's got <laughs> with him, and he said, uh, this is a performance piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did. He pointed at the bed and said, this is a performance piece. <laughs> I find that so embarrassing, but... You know. Yeah, but I'm glad you could share it. Yeah, well, it makes me, it makes me human, right? You already were. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, lending art. What do you do? Do you always lend it? What? How? You know, like what? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, every, anytime time. we're asked, uh, we lend it. And some pieces have traveled quite a bit. Um, obviously, most of them have not. Uh, we've had some. We had a show of Karen's baskets. She had a collect, has a collection of uh, Japanese Ikebana baskets, and we've had uh, a show or two of that. Um, mm -hmm. Several. We and obviously, uh, but art but pieces we, travel. Yeah, too. we do. We do. We loan work freely. When something this is interesting. Sometimes there are artists that will want to buy a piece, and they'll say, "No, really, don't want to sell that piece. How about this piece?" And we go, "No, we really would like to buy this piece." And we have been able to buy the piece with the promise that we will loan it to them anytime they want. Yeah. And so, and sometimes it's been on loan a lot. It's, it, you know, why do you collect art? You collect art because you love it, because you love to live with it, because you love to be around it, and because you love to share it with others. And I'm told that that isn't necessarily true in Europe. But in the United States, most people enjoy sharing their art, sharing it with the uh, Edu people in the education field, selling, sharing it with people in the architecture field, uh, the people coming uh, tomorrow night, uh, it was a benefit of an auction to tour our art collection. So that's helping, uh, helping charity. So we're big believers in sharing our art, whether it's, whether it's just having people come through or whether it's sending it to Europe. I think most good collectors agree. Yeah, yeah I think so in this country. I do but too. I've been told in Europe, they're very private and won't let people into their collections. I, maybe they're afraid. I don't know. I don't know either. That's interesting. And I, I, I spoke to, we did a um, webinar a year ago with Akio Aoki, who maybe you know from Sao Paulo, 
who said he was reluctant to sell to Asian collectors because they would not lend their work. And it didn't serve his artists very well to have the work sold and not shared. Yeah. Um, so that, that was some sort of constraint on his part. What do you do when you lend a work of art with the hole on the wall? Move something else in. And what happens when the art comes back? Sometimes we uh, don't. Re sometimes it doesn't go back in the same place. Sometimes it was in such a perfect place that it goes back where it was. Uh, but uh, there's no set formula to that. Do you rehang parts of the house periodically, or is it usually by default when things come and go? No, periodically we move things around uh, and and rehang things. We don't do a whole wholesale rehanging like George did, uh, except that one time. But yeah, we move things very frequently. We believe you stop seeing them if you don't move them. And you see them in different, different locations. Um, and they have a dialogue with other works of art and they make different statements. Yes. Yeah, that's all true. Alisa, go ahead. You have a bunch of things to say. <laughs> Hi, thanks for being here. I'm just so excited about your, your heart-centered collecting methods. <laughs> um, what is the percentage of sculpture in your collection versus wall art is one of my questions. The, the percentage of three-dimensional work would be very high, and I don't know the number. But that's what we started with uh, because we had outside space. Uh, it, was, it was different than what most people were collecting. It was all, often a better value in our, in our point of view. And uh, so we have continued to collect three-dimensional work. Uh, once we built our new home, which was 13 years ago, for the first time we did have some wall space. But we're not big painting collectors. The, the, the number of paintings we would have would be relatively small. The, uh, we have, again, those baskets, the ceramics, uh, a lot of different things like that. But those are sculptural pieces in, in, in our way of thinking. So uh, the sculptural content would be very high. Oh, wonderful. Do you find any, um, any enamel work out there in the world that, you, that you're interested in? I'm just curious. Uh, Meaning glass on steel or glass on copper? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Not that I recall. Me either. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure we have. Oh, I, I have a, uh, I've got a, You know, we're collectors. We collect a lot of things. And maybe <laughs> <laughs> all starts that we had this collecting gene both of us I mean I have a vodka collection with over 600 different kinds of vodka in it. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. another part of the blog <laughs> yeah so so we we collect all kinds of things and one of the things we collect are uh, a lot of uh, Bakelite pins actually Rican Echo finds a lot of those for us so we I both Karen and I wear a lot of pins some of those are enamel uh, but that's about the only thing I can think of yeah Great, thank you. I was interested in that. I wanted to go with that question. What other kinds of things do you collect that aren't art, per se? First edition books, uh, the baskets. Oh, my goodness. Pie birds. Pie birds. You know what those are? They put them in the middle of a pie. They're antique ones so that the pie doesn't run over. Uh, little metal banks. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Small it? car collection. Yeah. Motorcycles. Bicycles. <laughs> bicycle uh, saddles yeah what else uh, yeah you know it's it's uh back when i worked all the time and and we would travel together karen would visit these bookstores and i bet we've got ten thousand volumes of books mm. uh and and of course we have a lot of art books as well we have a huge collection of art books which we enjoy collecting we've run out of space though Fascinating. All right, I'm looking at all these other questions and things. Um, Sarah Lynch talks about making pie birds. I didn't know. That's what... interesting. Sarah, I'm going to call on you. I don't know what you're going to say, but I, what, what, I wanted you guys should know each other. Go ahead. Hi. I, no, I just randomly commented that I make pie birds for people. Like, I, I'm a painter, but I do ceramics as my day job, which is sort of strange. But And it just made me really happy to hear that you collect pie birds. I love to look up the vintage ones, and there's some crazy ones out there, like the elephants. And Oh, I've got all those. <laughs> <laughs> is there any way I can see your pie bird collection? You have, you have to come see us and yeah. visit us. Yeah. 
That's so, and it's so funny because your glasses are very similar to one of my professors from college. And it really <laughs> threw me off for a minute. I was like, whoa, we're talking to John Gill today. Okay. <laughs> you guys know John Gill probably? No, I not that I recall. Isn't, isn't that, what is that, Alfred? Yeah. Well, yeah. if you guys ever meet, you'll be like, whoa, glasses. <laughs> Um, all right, thank you, Sarah. Dorothy had a number of comments and questions that have been interesting, and I'm unmuting you, Dorothy. Go ahead. Hi, I used to study Ikebana, and I'm wondering if you've ever put any arrangements in your Ikebana baskets. Yes, yes, I took lessons for years, and that's how I became interested in the baskets, in fact. Oh, which school did you study in? Sagetsu. Oh, Sagetsu. I studied in the Ikenovo school. I see. Karen, Karen uh, studied for, you became a master teacher. Mm -hmm. I studied for years and years with a woman in Omaha, Nebraska, who had lived years and years in Japan. So um, it's a wonderful art form. And, yeah. collect, and collecting those old uh, Ikebana baskets led us into uh, contemporary fiber art, mostly here from the United States. And so we have quite a collection of those as well. I could see how the the combination would, would bring you to those because they did some beautiful baskets back yeah. then. All right, Harley. Harley's in Australia. I just want to show you the range from no Norway to Australia. Harley, go ahead. How you going, guys? I uh, love listening to, especially the airplanes. My dad uh, grew up building airplanes. So. Did he? My Great. Dad, yeah, all sorts of things. So, love flying. Um, I've got a question about uh, what the art is made from. You said a lot of sculpture. You know, uh, what are your thoughts on 3D printed things? Like that's a. Well, tell me about uh, the, the stick house. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. No. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. The, stick house. the 3D printing. Um, yeah. I, th I think it's fascinating. I think it's a valid form of art. And uh, uh, I've yet to see much uh, work as a result of it. But I'm, it's like, uh, it's a new medium and it's going to, uh, it's going to be around and it's going to, and people can do wonderful things with it. I'm all for it. I'm very open to seeing work on 3D printers. I misunderstood the question. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't actually use 3D printing. I'm just interested in your perspective. So. We've, got a, we've got a friend in Omaha that, uh, has been has developed a ceramic product that can be utilized in the 3D printers, and he's working with all kinds of interesting possibilities with that. And by the way, on the side, he just built us a pizza oven, <laughs> stainless steel <laughs> pizza oven. <laughs> on wheels. And, I had and, dinner with him when Kaneko's, you know, pieces yeah. um, opened at the Netsuki, etc., and the Dungos opened at Millennium Park. Yeah. And, and I'm blanking on his name. What? Uh, John Balasari. Don. John. Okay, cool. Yeah, and uh, and John, uh, uh, well, I, I sh my comment was that um, Ann Pagel asked me, she says, is that a pizza oven or a work of art? <laughs> I says, well, I'm going to get him to sign it. Let's call it a work of art. <laughs> there you go. Um, other interesting questions. Ann, I'm coming up there, up to the top of the alphabet. Go ahead, Ann. Go ahead, Ann. Hi, everybody, and thank you for this. Um, if you lend work, who pays for for um, shipping and crating and that expense? Well, I would say generally, generally the, the uh, institution borrowing the work offers to pay for that. If they didn't, we would, so. Okay, thanks. Uh -huh. um, what was the question? Somebody, I mean, how open are you to people visiting? Well, as, as we said before, we're, we're... I know, but you don't want people ringing your doorbell unannounced, though I bet that happens occasionally. It, it has, it has, and actually, I should say, we do restrict the people that tour the collection. People that are in the art field and have a real true interest in the art, uh, people are in architecture, and, and once in a while, these, uh, these benefits. But uh, no, we don't just open the door to anybody that wants to come in and look. I mean, yeah, that wouldn't be, it wouldn't be sane. <laughs> uh, well, you have to do it on a scheduled basis. So we have to be there here or, or Anne has to be here. So we have to schedule it. 
Now, once in a while, Anne will schedule, she'll get a collection of artists that want to take a tour. And so she'll schedule on a certain day at a certain time, and then several people can come together. And that makes sense. We do it that way. So, I mean, I'm clear, there's 50 artists in this course, and all of them, all of them want to come visit. Um, <laughs> And you would want them to be organized and you would want it to have a critical mass of two that dozen is, people, a dozen people? No, well, that isn't necessary. For example, the people are on here tonight, if they're coming through Lincoln, Nebraska, call us and let us know and we can, we can give a tour for just a, a person or two. That doesn't matter. It, it's just that, you know, we, we don't want uh, somebody from the local, uh, I don't know what. Jail. Yeah, all of a sudden. <laughs> And, uh, and we've had people come to the gate. Can I come in and look? No. no it's our home. It's it our is home. our home, it's too. It's our home. Where they forget sometimes that it's our home. Exactly. Um, Sarah had a couple of questions. And um, hold on. It's a good thing I know how the alphabet works. Go ahead, Sarah. Hi. I was just wondering, do you ever commission works? Yes, we have uh, done that a few times. Um, hasn't always been the best experience. Uh, I guess some of them have, have worked out fine. Some of them have been a disappointment. Uh, Karen's kind of uh, opposed to commissioning of work. So we haven't done a lot of that. I like to see what I'm going to buy before I buy it. I mean, it just feels better to me to be able to look at it and then buy it. I think that's clearly the problem frequently with commissions is that you have something in mind that you're, you're commissioned because this is what I want. And you end up getting, you know, somebody's interpretation of that. Whereas if you can look at it and see what you're buying before you spend the money, you go, yeah, that is what I want. Exactly. Or I want this as opposed to, oh my God, I got an Edsel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we had one piece where the artist built a maquette that we loved. And so we, we said, let's build that in an outdoor and a large scale size. He completely changed it. It looked nothing I mean, it, it like it looked the McKenna. nothing like the McKenna. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do a lot of commissions, but I have like a system in place to do it. So I, I discuss what they want. I say yes or no. You know, I say no a lot because sometimes they're just wrong. And I was just, I clearly you guys buy a lot of works already. I was just wondering if you preferred not to do commissions. Well, we and we never tell it if we did a commission we wouldn't tell an artist what to do that's yeah. up to the we, we we would commission an artist because we like their work and uh, we'd like them to do a special piece for us we we often tell them build the best piece for us that that you've ever built but to tell them what to do no we wouldn't begin to do that but the disappointment in this one case is that we thought we were getting something and we got something entirely different yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I've had that same experience and it sort of taints it. It slows <laughs> you down from doing it again. Um, a couple of people are asking about email addresses and phone numbers, and I have mixed loyalties about asking that kind of a question. Um, should I not ask it? <laughs> well, um, you, it's okay for people to email us that are on this, uh, on this, uh, all right, so, let's, uh, so they should get in touch with me if they want your email address, et cetera, and I'll, and I'll, I'll give it to them. That'd be fine. Okay. Um, Kim had an interesting question. Kim, and we are beginning to think about running out of time here. Um, go ahead, Kim. I was wondering if either one of you uh, had parents who had an interest in the arts, whether you had something uh, from early on. I know Karen had the music, but uh, just curious. No, not neither one of us. No. Uh -uh. And Karen had, the, Karen had the music, but her parents didn't. Yeah. So. What about siblings? Well, I don't have any. I, I, I have just a sister that. <laughs> I have a sister that's a very good quilter. And uh, and makes art quilts, uh, so her own designs. Yeah, right. she's and she's very good. But that that's the extent of it. Robert, do you have other siblings who are disengaged or not engaged in the arts? Yeah, I've got one other sister, and she's not engaged in the arts at all. And do they think you're particularly brilliant or a little bit wacko? Wacko would be close. They it would be closer to wacko than brilliant. <laughs> they enjoy they enjoy our work though. Uh, it's hard not to. I mean. 
we've spent a, we've spent a lifetime collecting this, and we've had a great deal of fun, and it's and it reflects that. And there's always something somebody likes. You know? That's true. I mean, if, if people come who aren't even interested in art, they find things they like. Something they respond to. Yeah. So. You know, by extension, though, I think the advice to artists is make what you, you know, c come from your core, come from who you are. Don't look for right. trends, you know, and make what you believe in and then, you know, find a way to find the person that loves what it is that you do because those people are out there. And, you know, it may not be your neighbor, but it could be somebody down the street or around the world. Or in Lincoln, right. Nebraska. Yeah. Right. Lincoln's wonderful, you know. Um, this has been great. Um, somebody wants to know about the piece behind Karen. I mean, a couple of people, and who, who is that? This one over here? Yes. Carol Dunham. Fabulous. Yeah, there you could see yeah. it. Yeah. And I don't know what else is behind this. Fletcher Ben, a small Fletcher Benton on the table back there. Can't see the Fletcher Benton. This must be the piece then. Yeah. The Carol Dunham. Um, it was a Carol Dunham for sure. Um, all right, you guys, this has been super duper fabulous. You, you know, the reason, and you, you have done this in spades, you know, so many artists are so passionate about what they do. And the assumption is, is that most, co many collectors are decorating and they, they don't, you know, and you guys clearly have a palpable passion about collecting art and artists and a love that, you know, equals that of artists who make this wonderful stuff. And, I need to say that as awesome as you guys are, you're not alone. There are other there are other collectors who have a comparable passion for art and artists and love the whole experience in doing it. And I think you guys illustrate that just fabulously. I am totally appreciative of your contribution to the arts, to the planet, and to our discussion this evening. Thank you very, very much. I'm unmuting everybody so we can hear all the noise. And everybody can say thank you for the video. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you a ton.